Like the bread doesn't know who he is. He's not normal. Messi's tapped, bro. He's a hundred percent. Yeah, he's a hundred percent on the spectrum, bro. He is hundred percent, bro. Like it's crazy. You know what I'm saying? I see Messi just deactivate, bro. Sometimes you see him walking on the pitch. Yeah, he forgets he's in the middle of a match. <laughs> it's crazy. Like, he genuinely forgets, bro. Like you can see him. Mm. You can see him, bro. Like the Brer's just like he just gets lost in his own head, bro. And then he activates and scores, and then just <clears> walking <throat> again, bro. He, he's different, bro. He's different. You know what I'm saying? I ain't seen a player like that, bro. Like I mean, he's like a he's like a monk, bro. He's he's a ninja, bro. Mm. That's what Messi's on, bro. He's not normal, cuz. That's what I mean, bro. And he's been with his club the whole time as well, man. He didn't even right. do a mad thing. Like, Ronaldinho was out there going to Rio de Janeiro. Man was going to Carnival. Man was doing mad stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and even Beckham, bro. You see the documentary, Beckham? He used that stardom to do bro, the Listen, mad Beckham was outside, bro. Like, listen, don't listen to Beckham, innit? He was outside, bro. Listen, he was outside. You know them ones there, like, bro. Oh, listen, any man here yeah, that would drive four hours to London to link a gal when he's got a game in the morning, yeah, and his manager Salit Ferguson and he doesn't care, he's outside, bro. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Because fam, it's one of them ones where, bro, man said, bro, the cheeks kept, they were calling him, bruv. Four bro, hours. The gal, the gal them loved him. The gal them loved him. Bro, that's a seven hour him. round trip, you know, from Manny to London, back to Manny. Just for a little squeeze in a car park and that, bro. I don't, blame, I don't blame him though, because Victoria looks like the teacher from Hard Henry, bro. Like at the end of the day, she went, did you win? She does. She looks like the teacher from Hard Henry. Man's like, yo, let me go get an exotic thing or something. Let me get, yeah. change it up. You know what I mean? Yeah, hundred, hundred percent. Bro, so like, trust me, you man them are outside, bro. Like, and the thing is, if you watch here yeah, the Beckham documentary, he says, yeah, how much the allegations upset his family he never said he didn't do it not once <laughs> bro what watch it where does he deny it yo rags panorama right now rags panorama you're, you're bro, thinking of the whole listen. thing <laughs> bro you, you, bruv, listen to me yeah i'm a goon bruv you know what I'm, I'm a goon bruv like you gotta oh. understand yeah like oh. i focus on what people don't say mm. do you know what i'm saying like fuck what you say do you know what I'm saying? Because that's what it is. A man said, like, 90% of human communication is non-verbal, bro. It's what you don't say. That's what I'm looking for. I don't give a fuck about what you say. <clears throat> you know what I mean? What does that mean? Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro. Do you know what I'm saying? And this is why, yeah? In life, no isn't always a no. Because 90% is non-verbal. Do you know what I'm saying? But that 10% will get you locked up. Do you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> And uh, this is exactly what that's, that's what it is. Hundred percent. Like, bro, you man, have to understand. <laughs> them Spanish things would have been dashing themselves at him. You remember bro. when he had a little ponytail? And the thing is, yeah, even bro, he come with a samurai now. thing, bro, and he was chopping things, bro. I'm telling you. And you know what the wickedest thing with Bex is, yeah? It's like, <laughs> bro, the whole streets knew his wife wasn't there because it was in the news. You know them ones there? It was in the news, brother. Oh, the wife's not coming. There, there, he's here by himself. Man was broadcasting, man was lonely. It's David Beckham. You're telling the streets that his wife ain't here and he wasn't chopping? In Milan. In Milan. No, he went to Milan. Yo, I'm going Milan, you know. But it don't matter if you don't come. Man went to Milan. What was man doing in Milan? Yeah? You know what I'm saying? Man was on Tinder before Tinder. That guy was active. You know what I'm saying? Marv Bex was outside. <laughs> Understand? He was outside, blood, playing Fruit Ninja, bruv. Chopping. You know them <laughs> ones there, bruv. Everything, bruv. All these things were getting moved to. Even Roy Keane said it. He's like, oh, Bex, yeah, he was a pretty boy. And he kind of... He, didn't, bruv, he, he loved the girls. He <laughs> like, bro. Man said he got 50 bags from Adidas and, spe and blew that on an M3 immediately or something like that. <laughs> The whole 50 racks. Come on, bro, oh, like, what, what, Who was Beckham buying the car for if it weren't for Gal? And you can tell he's the type of guy, yeah? And this is the difference between someone like Beckham and someone like, someone like um, <laughs> Sagna. You know, I think, was it Sagna? Back in Sagna had the mad thing, though, the model. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, but, but would Sagna be drawing things if he didn't have money, bro? His I hair remember. looking like... 
Look at that tweenies, bro. Look at like, the purple character from tweenies, bro. That like, come on, he won't be drawing gal. If you're looking at tweenies. <laughs> no way. Wait, shout saying? out Gunner in the chat. 100 percent Bakari Sanya, bro. 100 percent the money. The money he was drawing with the bread. Kevin Hart, number one. Wouldn't be drawing no gal if he wasn't Kevin no, Hart. Of course you know not, right now. Bro, listen, bro, this saying. is what I'm saying. You can't tell me that Beckham weren't outside, bro. He was 10 toes, bro. Like he was outside. <laughs> And he had bare Brazilians around him as well. I just remember now. He had Roberto Carlos. Bro, <laughs> had, had what are you telling me, bro? Him and Roberto Carlos were bare close. Like, <laughs> them man was saying, how are these man best friends? They don't speak the same language. Can they speak <laughs> Gyal? That's why, bro. Can they speak Gyal? He was Gyal, in with bro? the Havanas. <laughs> bro, <laughs> their man smoke. They smoke. They, they spoke a Gyal, blood. That's the language they spoke. That's why they could sit at a table for two hours and laugh, blood. Um. Are you trying to tell me, yeah, man's outside with R9 and Roberto Carlos and R9 is the biggest gallus, bro? <laughs> Come on, bro. And you know the link of Ronaldinho, that guy there. Oh, my days. Bro, bro. Roberto Carlos can speak English now because of Bex, but he couldn't at the time. Do you know what I'm saying? R9, no English. Zero. <laughs> Bear gal. That's what man was on, bro. Carnival, <laughs> blood. Every mm. night. That's what he was at. And you think Beckham was inside? Get out of here. You know he didn't, he didn't deny don't... the affair, bro. Man said, oh, it was a tough time for the family. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, could have ruined us. Man never said. He said he was disappointed. <laughs> he never said, oh, I didn't do it. It's a lie. Do you know what I'm saying? He never said, I'm innocent. I can't believe they would say these things. He said, listen, it was a tough time for the family. That's what he said. <laughs> That's what he said, bro. Bro, it's what he said. Uh, and you know what, yeah? You know, she probably, girls always want to break up, yeah? Your friendship, your closest friendship is the friendship you did the most dirt with. Yeah. You know she wants to break up that friendship. You, you know she... I've never seen Roberta Carlos and, 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 and flipping Horrid Henry's, Horrid Henry's teacher talking. I've never seen them talking. You know why? Because they always hate your closest friend. Because with your closest friend, you've done it. You've got your darkest secrets. Yeah, you because she knows dirt. who the goons are, bro. <laughs> Victoria, <laughs> bro, they know Vicky. I'm gonna call her Vicky, <laughs> bro. Bruv, these girls know who the, who the worst friends are, bro. Because, fam, uh, bruv, a girl will meet your brethren, bro. And you see the brother, depending on how they introduce themselves to your girl, like, yeah, he's the guy, bro. Get him away from him, <laughs> you bruv, the girl know, blood. You know, like that, and they know, oh, yeah, he's too friendly. Get him away from him, he's a problem. <laughs> you know, there was a bruv, man, no. You know them one day, them Brazilian man come up to your gal and that all like kiss on the face, both sides and that smiling. Yeah, nah, 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 nah. Not you, fam. <laughs> that, that's what it is. She'll be like, Got nah, you nah, chill with Roy Keane. Got you chill. Nah. Chill with Gary Neville. <laughs> Bro, I'm telling you. Like, I think Salgado. Salgado married someone's daughter or something. One of the one of the big dog's daughters or something. I think so. He was kind of outside, then he had to be inside. You know, like that, but now nah, it's peak, bro. You see, bro, when she meets your brethren and he's lit, blood, he's drunk and he's all friendly and that lowy. My, my man can't go out with them, man. That's what them gal are thinking. You know, them way there, bro. That's why, bro, like, Salad Ferguson got rid of Lee Sharp, blood, because he had gigs out in these streets. <laughs> in these streets, blood. You know what I'm saying? House parties, gal there, all that, bro. Ferguson kicked man out the whole club, removed him <laughs> from the whole city. Because he knew that he was going to have gigs outside and he knew gigs was a wrong in any way. Do you know what I'm <laughs> saying? But I said, you know what, if he's by himself, he can't do that. Uni nights on a Monday. <laughs> Bro, listen, Lee Sharp had him, had Giggsy and that going down to what's it called? Where the beach is. Where's the beach? Up north, where, the, where them, them man go out. Where the fuck is it? Oh, bro. Where's Bournemouth? Is Bournemouth up north? No, no, no. It's up north, not down south. Up north, they got the, the, the beach thing with um the little mad beach thing with the with the rides and shit like that. What's it called? Yeah, I think it might be Blackpool. Yeah, them that were out in I think they were out in Blackpool doing the mad thing, bro. Doing the mad thing in Blackpool and that. You know them them little coastal places and that, bro. Big gal and that, bro. Listen, gigs the eye in Blackpool with Sharp and that, bro. What? I'm Paul Lintz, bruv. What? 
You know what I mean? I'm Paul Lintz, bro. And you know he's the only black one. He was running through these things. Raw Lin- Paul Lintz, bruv. Raw mints, blood with the snow bunnies. Bro, it was... Bro, I swear to... Oh. Bro, listen. Paul Lintz, you know. Paul Lintz, Lee Sharp and Ryan Giggs. Mad thing. Can't lie. You know what I mean? There. That's mm. what I'm saying. It's crazy, bro. Bruv. Nah, it's crazy. That's what that man know, bro. It was Blackpool, fam. Yeah, because I heard Bergy like, saying he liked players that were settled, were married, kind of trying had to get like, them married mm-hmm. off. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. Trying yeah, to get yeah, them yeah. married off. That's what, bruv. That's why eh, with the Rooney thing, straight away, man was like, yeah, you got your girl and that. Lock that down. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's what their mama on. Lock that. Lock that. With the Beckham thing, he was like, yeah, get married, but not to her, bro. Nah. You get me? That's what he was on. He was like, go find a nice little quiet girl and that. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That's what he was on. He was on trying to get everyone settled down. Do you know what yeah, I'm saying? And, and that's what he was on, bro. So, bro, it's crazy. It's yeah, actually it's crazy, bro. Do you know it's what I'm mad. Did you, hear, no, did you hear the links of um, Douglas Luiz to Arsenal? You've been linked with this prayer for like four years now. Apparently, when we didn't get him, I think it was two transfer windows ago where we could have locked him off or maybe three. I think it was like the last day of the transfer window. We tried to get a deal over the line. And then a lot of Arsenal fans, we didn't get it over the line. They were quite happy that we didn't get the player. All of a sudden now, a lot of them want... the player though? He's all right, but he's going to win me the league. No. I don't feel like he's... He's not going to win you the league. He's just going to be another good player in a good squad. But he's not a game changer. No, but he's better than Kai Havertz. You should have gone and got him instead of Havertz. And then you wouldn't be having this conversation. But the problem is now, every signing you bring in now... It's just going to be, yeah, but does it take us to the next level? Because that's where you should be. Does Douglas Luiz take you to the next level? Not really. He just replaces Xhaka. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, but it doesn't take you to the next level. Like for me, if you let go of Granite Xhaka's influence and you knew you were going to get rid of Thomas Partey, you need to bring in players that are upgrades on both of those players for it to make sense. Hmm. Because you're not going to get money for Jack, um, for a party, not a lot. And you didn't get a lot of money for Xhaka, did you? Like, what, little 30 mil or something? I think it was even less than that. Well, there you go. <laughs> Protecting so his value, though, wasn't it? So <laughs> even if you got 20 million for him, yeah, and then you spent 105 million on rice, do you know what I mean? Like, and then, what, 60 something million on Kai Havertz or something? That's crazy. You think you spent nearly 200 million, yeah? <clears throat> on midfielders to replace someone that went out for 21 million that's outperforming the man that's replaced him is weird bro i can't lie that don't look like good business i was looking back on old Mourinho clips going in on arsene wenger saying that certain managers don't have pressure certain managers don't have to win stuff to keep their jobs other managers now have more sympathy we have to win stuff to keep our jobs and i was thinking bro since he made those statements what's been different about my football club because no one's going to call for Arteta's head if we don't win anything this season. Let's no, keep it real. Won't. They won't. Yeah? I'm already seeing excuses of certain people saying, as long as he wins something. Well, hold on. That wasn't good enough to keep Wenger in a job. That wasn't good enough to, 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 to keep Emery in a job. Like, why are we saying now something when the expectation at the start of the season was to now, you've got the time, you've got the back, and you've got the money. Now it's time to deliver major honours or as long as we win something. And this is why I'm not optimistic, bro, because... The bar, they'll, they'll set a standard and then there's always some kind of reason why they have to lower the standard again. You know what I'm saying? Oh, well, he's trying this new football. We're trying this new control football. Oh, we can't compete with Man City. Oil money, VAR's after us. And this is what I'm saying. It's like, bro, I'm not hearing it, bro, because Man City are able to do a treble while they've, they're have managed by VAR. Like, what is the difference? Like, do you get what I'm saying? I, I just, I'm not hearing it, bro. I've seen games yeah, yeah, where... They keep moving the goalposts just to keep you, man... Um, keep you, man, um, satisfied with the process. Do you know what I mean? But for me, it's all nonsense, bro. I'll be real. I got nothing to be happy about if I'll be completely real with you, bro. Like, man is saying, oh, but Arteta's got us back to a standard. Bro, this standard of top four was not a standard I rated even under Arsene Wenger. Yeah, of course. You wanted my man out the club for that standard. You lot thought you should do better and you're barely getting back to that. Do you know what I mean? And what, um, two of his seasons, three of his seasons... He finished outside of that even. 
And so even yeah. even then, yeah, I weren't even allowing Venga to get away with, oh, we can't spend money. I weren't even hearing that talk. You know what I'm saying? Because every every transfer window, there's always bargains to be had. Basuma, Madison, players like that. Do you know what I'm saying? Going and, go in and getting a netto and players like that. There's always bargains to be had. And a lot of times, Arsene Wenger would just do the cheapskate thing, like when we came second to Leicester, and not go out there and actually go out there and buy the players that are necessary. You don't have to break the bank all the time. You know what I'm saying? Atleti win major honours and they don't break the bank all the time. You don't have to break the bank. So Alex Ferguson, it's a myth that he broke the bank. He didn't always break the bank, bro. No, Not he every player he signed was breaking the bank, bro. Do you it know what I'm saying? But he had A1, he was A1 at identifying talent. Nani. One thing we did was we improved every year, no matter whether we won, won something or didn't win something. We always added to our team. We never said, all right, cool, we've won the league, we don't need to add. We'd win the league and still add. Do you know what I'm saying? And and that's what it was, bro. And uh, yeah, I just don't know, bro. And you no, literally, no. I remember you lot had, bro, the players you lot had on your bench was disgusting. You had Nani on the bench. I seen at times you had Berbatov on the bench. Yeah, we you had Berbatov. Like, yeah. Bro, you had ballers on the bench and no one said, oh no, he's got to play. Oh no, no one cared, bro. The bro, but this is the angry. era now. Like, oh, you're going to ruin so-and-so's development. Bro, shut up, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? We had big Berbatov on the bench, blood. Do you know what I'm saying? Man, a ruining development, broski. Bruv, man need 16 gunmen to win this league, innit? Like, that's what we need. Forget about ruining development, rude boy. Like, forget all of that. We need ballers throughout the squad. It's not we need 11 men and then men that are happy to sit on the bench. If you're not happy to sit on the bench, don't be at a big club. That's, That's it. it. And also, it's ageism as well. Everyone's got to be 21, 22. Bro, your manager identified that you needed Van Persie to win the league. He went and got it done. Went and got it done, bro. He didn't say, oh, you know what? You can only offer us... Is that going to win me the league? Cool, get it done. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? We'll deal with that after we win the league. Then we'll deal with that. And man mm -hmm. was performing. Van Persie was performing for Netherlands. I remember that kind of scorpion kick that he scored, bro. The guy was sourcing. Man didn't say, oh, he's 29, he's over the hill. And that's big Sir Alex Ferguson, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because he understood what it took to win. And this is why Man City are, are what Man United were. Because Man City won the treble. Had Mar they can have Mahrez mm. on the bench. Mahrez and Grealish. Now, <clears> that's the kind of bench Man United had. Do you know what I mean? We could bring a man from the bench that are good enough to start, but they could come in and make an impact. <clears> that's what we were. And now we're saying, oh, give Garnacho the number seven. Like, that's where we've died, bruv. 